So we are almost at the end of 2018 and I am going to take this time to talk about the biggest surprises in MLS, the 10 biggest surprises in MLS and these 10 things on the board is in no particular order and it's not really a ranking between these 10 lists so number 10 is not the least surprising and number one is not the biggest surprising thing that happened in MLS and tomorrow I'm going to do the biggest disappointment in MLS I'm also going to have a list of 10 things that were the biggest disappointment from this season but we start off with number one and number one we have Atlanta United setting multiple attendance record including MLS Cup attendance record and you know this one is not really kind of a surprise but certainly I put it there because of the numerous attendance that record that they have set and the fact that they have they had multiple games this season where there's 70,000 people watching an MLS game. I mean 70,000 people watching a soccer game is more than pretty much every single team will ever have for their Premier League home game except Manchester United because Old Trafford is 75,000 and it's even more than some of the other big team in Europe too so yeah it is absolutely incredible and the attendance for the MLS Cup uh, I believe it was around 73,000 that's more than the Champions League this year and for the past five Champions League final I mean that is that just shows you how this year MLS Cup it felt like a Champions League final with so many people just packed in to Mercedes-Benz Stadium to witness history and witness Atlanta United winning their first ever MLS Cup and only did it in their second year. I mean, that is that is incredible. Um, the second thing also related to Atlanta United is Joseph Martinez breaking a single season goal scoring record at 31 goal, I believe, or 30. I think it's, it's 31, but yeah, I mean, it's hard to believe that he broke the record this season and I know that last season when he was in the league and you know he spent a lot of time on the IR he still scored 19 goals which is incredible and you know there was always a question whether or not when he come back from the IR can he be as lethal as he was in the first season the answer is absolutely yes and he absolutely smashed this single season record like he got this record not just at the end of the season because usually when you have the previous two guys that tie with the record uh, BWP and Chris Wondolowski they did it right near the final week and near the end of the season Joseph Martinez he broke the record in August like with two months to spare he broke the record that is just incredible and you know he did kind of slow down as we head into the September and October month but the fact that he broke the record that soon just shows you how good he is and certainly he well deservedly won the MVP of this season and then the third biggest surprises is Zlatan Hollywood introduction so we know how good Zlatan is right but did, did we expect it that he was gonna score an absolute 40 yard volley to tie the game and complete a 3-0 comeback against their hated rival LAFC and did you expect him to score the winning goal in El Trafico I mean that is that's just something that is just too good to be real and just it felt like watching a Hollywood movie like as I, I talked about that game all the way back in March it felt like I was watching a movie it, it didn't felt like I was watching an MLS game it, it it's just too good to be true but you know that that is just I, I I'm I'm still kind of speechless even if I like go back to watching that game because I just didn't believe that was that's actually an MLS game but what an introduction it was from Zlatan Ibrahimovic and that goal that he scored that third goal I'm surprised that it wasn't really in the top three contention for Puskas of the year because that is just an incredible goal like I know Zlatan has won the Puskas award before with his overhead head kick back I believe in 2014 it was an international friendly against England and that won the push guys award I'm surprised that one didn't win it or even in the top three because nobody 
in the world can execute. Like, I have not seen anybody in the league able to execute a... And it wasn't even a chip. Usually when you score a 40 yards out, it's usually you just chip over the goalkeeper. No, he absolutely smashed that one on the volley and hits it into the back of the net. That is something we never see in this league. And I don't think we'll, we'll probably will never ever see that again unless if we're going to get another Zlatan in the future because that is just how good that goal is and rightfully so that is the goal of the year and maybe the greatest goal ever score in MLS like there's been a lot of good goals in MLS but that one is got to be ranked as the top three and maybe is the best ever goal we have ever seen in MLS in this 22 year history um and then the fourth thing is that Columbus Crew won a long, hard-fought fought battle to stay in Columbus. Obviously, the Save the Crew movement was a success. And again, I don't think this should be a pretty big surprise. I think it's surprising because of the fact that when there was report that Columbus was going to move to Austin, and as the story goes out, it looked like it was a huge possibility. Like... There was definitely a case where, you know, Columbus will no longer be in Columbus and that Anthony Precott is going to take his team to Austin and they're going to basically form and name themselves as Austin FC. But, you know, they got, they finally found a new owner. Um, you know, as I said before, it is not official that Jimmy Haslam, the, the owner that is interested to buy the Columbus crew it is not official that he has has took over this team but they are finalizing the deal and it is just incredible story to see the crew who looked like for sure that they were packing their bags heading to Texas and heading in and looked like it was just going to be be an incident that we had a, had 10 years ago with the Quakes going to Houston but you know, the social media certainly helped out the cause. Uh, the Save the Crew moment, the hashtag Save the Crew. And you saw me in one of the video putting like the hashtag Save the Crew. And I even have a scar on my wall there too. Well, not on my wall, but it's hanging right there near the closet. But yeah, it was an incredible movement. And, you know, I'm so happy that the crew has stayed in Columbus because MLS is different from the rest of the league. You know, I know a lot of people will always say, well, you know, you look at other leagues that you've seen teams relocated. Why this MLS doesn't have to copy that? Well, MLS is unique. In soccer, you do not just decide to relocate a team and move to somewhere else. That usually have never happened in the world and it shouldn't happen in MLS. We shouldn't be copying what the American sports culture is because it's different. This, I, I like the fact that MLS is different from most of the sports league that we had here in the States. And then the fifth thing is that LAFC breaking Atlanta points record for an expansion team. And this one really flies under the radar because a lot of people, they were very hyped up about Atlanta last season breaking the records for for an expansion team but this season LAFC despite the fact that they broke the record nobody really talked about it like it was pretty flying under the radar and I guess maybe because of the fact that you know what Atlanta United did and how it, it was just incredible that they did that you know if you're a second team to, to do an incredible stuff like that then it's not as hyped up as it is it's it's Kind of like saying if the Seattle Sounders are going to play an MLS Cup and they're going to completely pack CenturyLink Field and probably have an attendance of 68,000 or something like that, you know, obviously that's not going to be the record because Atlanta got 73,000 and CenturyLink is a bit smaller than Mercedes-Benz Stadium. But if Seattle gets 68,000 people for an MLS Cup, you know, some people will say, well, that's... That's great, but we've seen it before, so it's not going to be as impressive as we saw in the first time. And that's what LAFC kind of fell into the victim of this, is that, you know, we saw Atlanta did, 
this a year ago. If another team does that, then it's impressive, but it's not as good as the team that did it the first time. So that's why this is kind of a a surprise that in some way they kind of fly under the radar a little bit. And also with the way that this team, we knew that coming into this season, LAFC was good, but we didn't know that the the way that their squad has been put in and how there's just really not a lot lot of depth in this team we didn't knew or we didn't know that this team was going to be near where Atlanta United was and even better Atlanta last season in terms of the expansion record so that's the the other big surprises with LAFC this season but unfortunately just like Atlanta last season they faltered in the first hurdle in the playoffs and shockingly got eliminated by RSL in the playoffs. And then the sixth thing that was the biggest surprise is DC United and Seattle with their crazy second half resurgence. Um, DC, I thought for sure that they were dead and buried. Even with the fact that they're going to have a lot of home games heading into the second half of the season, nobody thought that DC was going to just completely turn the switch. I mean... DC for the first half of the season was just sleepwalking. I mean, it, it it was definitely a big surprise that they were able to not not just just win a couple of games at Audi Field, but they they pretty much made Audi Field look like a fortress, like nobody could win at out Audi Field in the second half of the season. Well, I wouldn't say nobody because they did lost there twice, but it was just such a fortress there. And for Seattle, I think what what is surprising about this is not because they have another second half resurgence because that's been kind of their motto for the last two years is that they tend to just sleepwalk the first half of the season and when that second half of the season begins, that's when they decide to to really show up for the season. But it's just the fact that they were in so much trouble heading in to the second half of the season it wasn't like in the past where you know they started very poorly but this season it was incredibly poor like it was getting to a point where they did not even hit double digit goal scoring mark until like three or two or two or three months into the season and there was definitely real concern in Sounders land and there was a lot of talk that Brian Schmitzer might be gone Garth Lagerway might might be voted out and that Seattle was going to go on a rebuilding instead of just having this resurgence. But it turns out that was not the case. They once again fooled everybody. And they have once again pulled off this crazy second half resurgence. Which, by the way, I don't think it's going to keep continue. Like, I know that they've been doing this for the last three seasons. But seriously, I will be shocked if this will happen next season. Like, if the Sounders does it again if they have this crazy resurgence once again for the fourth years in a row i'm gonna question what exactly is going on there there has to be something very suspicious that is going on with the sounders of why they always have a second half resurgence and don't show up in the first half of the season and then the seventh thing is that portland reaching to mos cup final so the sounders cascadia neighbor the portland timber did reach the the MLS Cup final and I'm pretty sure if you would have told me at the beginning of the MLS Cup playoffs that Portland Timbers will reach to MLS Cup I would just laugh at you like first of all the Timbers have to get past FC Dallas which you know I said that that was kind of like a 50-50 game and okay yes they won the 50-50 and then they have to go to the Seattle Sounders where you know yeah maybe but the Sounders they they will figure out a way to beat this team and knowing what happened in the second second leg and how it looked like for sure Seattle was going to win win that game with them just dominating the game and Portland not really doing much on the attack yeah I thought for sure that that that's the the that's probably going to be a Seattle win but Portland prevail in penalty and then you know heading into Sporting KC I still didn't believe Portland was going to reach MLS Cup because in some way they got kind of got lucky against Seattle you know PK shootout usually when you come out 
all the PK shootout, a lot of people consider you very lucky because in a PK shootout, it's 50-50. Um, but they beat Sporting KC. And in that second leg, if you thought I said that Seattle was absolutely dominating the Timbers in that second leg, yeah, Sporting KC absolutely dominate with a capital D on the Timbers. And yet somehow the Timbers are able to have just this 10-minute good spell in the game. And that was all it took to basically turn this this two-legged affair on its head and pretty much decided that two-legged affair. So I won't say that Portland kind of got lucky heading into this MLS Cup because the way I'm saying it is that, yes, they kind of got lucky getting into MLS Cup. But the resilience and the, the, the mentality of how against all odds they are still able to move on into the next round you know you got to give a lot of credit to the timbers and you got to give a lot of credit to geo savarisi too that never quit mentality is just really there with this portland team and unfortunately they kind of got ran out of gas when they play atlanta united in the mls cup final and you know it is obviously incredibly hard when you're already heading into the MLS Cup Final as huge underdogs and you have to face an Atlanta team that is probably the best team in the history of M MLS this season. I know the Red Bulls had an incredible Bull season, but what Atlanta did this season is just, it's incredible. Uh, the eighth thing th that that is the biggest surprise in MLS, and I kind of cheated a little bit with this one, but TFC beating... Two of the best Liga MX team in CCL. And, you know, the reason why I said I cheated this a little bit is because CCL is not MLS. But it is involved with an MLS team. And, you know, TFC, before they had had just an absolute disastrous season where they never kind of get things going like they supposed to do in the second half of the season. You know, they beat two of the best Liga MX team. You know, back... In April last year, Tigres just won Liga MX, considered one of the best team in Liga MX, and they beat them in those two legs. And then when they play against Club America, they absolutely destroyed them at the Azteca. They won 4-1 against Club America at the Azteca. Like nobody, no MLS team can 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 just go to the Azteca and just do a complete spanking. On Club America that usually never happens and yet the fact that TFC did it just shows you how impressed that that is and unfortunately it would have been incredibly impressive if TFC would have just beat one more Liga MX team and that of course was Chivas and in a game where it was just there to lose and unfortunately they lost it and that is also a little hint to talk about tomorrow's or Saturday's biggest disappointment in MOS um, and then the last two thing is that the Dynamo of course winning the US Open Cup you know this year US Open Cup was kind of really strange because it was a year where it did not really involve a lot of good team a lot of good team like even Atlanta United got 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 kind of eliminated very early in the US Open Cup and you know the Dynamo as they head deeper into the tournament I didn't think that they were going to last too because they were losing in the league and it just felt like the only time where the Dynamo were able to win games is at the US Open Cup. But, you know, overall, I think the reason why this is a big surprise is more to do with the fact that there were not a lot of big teams that reach into the semifinals. So some of the best team in the league got eliminated very early in the rounds, which is why when we head into the U.S. Open Cup, it was between the Dino and the Union, two teams that you didn't think that they were going to get go all the way, but here they are. So, yeah, and finally, the last thing that was the biggest surprise in MLS is the amount of coaching change. Like, there was seven coaching change this season, which is almost one-third of the league that has to have a coaching change. That is incredible. Like, the amount of turnover rate for coaching this season is just something we never seen in MOS. And it also shows you how 
job security in terms of of coaches is getting slimmer and slimmer and we're almost at a point where it's kind of like premier league level kind kind of way now where in the premier league if you do not do well for your team in the first couple of games and you basically drive that team to the ground you are obviously going to get sacked i mean the gm for most of these teams are getting more trigger happy and certainly more teams are showing more ambition that they are going to do whatever it takes to to find the right coach and if that coach does not cut it we are going to basically cut him it isn't like in the past where oh you had one bad year we're gonna maybe give you another chance yeah that's no longer the case it, it you know and in some way i guess in some way it's good and i guess in some way it's kind of bad i mean in a good way, it's that teams are kind of showing more ambition. But in a bad way, if you have so many coaching changes, it kind of really disrupt the rhythm of the team. I mean, I know there's an old saying that usually coaching change kind of fire up the, the team and usually they have a new environment. That usually is not always the case. Sometimes when you have a coaching change, sometimes the new coach would just, just create some different tactics that is completely against what the players really want and it kind of disrupts your rhythm of of what is your overall culture and philosophy your team really wanted so yeah that is pretty much it for the 10 biggest surprises in mls let me know in the comments below what do you think of these surprises and again tomorrow or saturday i'm gonna do the 10 biggest disappointment in mls this season and yeah hope you guys enjoy this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash that subscribe button and yeah i will see you guys next time